A couple of months ago, Elon Musk announced some new information on the SpaceX BFR rocket, which was live streamed on the SpaceX YouTube channel. I'll post a link to it in the description below if you want to check it out. But what caught my attention was the new control method of the BFS, the Big Falcon ship. Now the current Falcon 9 rockets, and also the Falcon Heavy rocket, re-enter the atmosphere backwards with the rocket nozzles pointing first. And it controls itself using aerodynamic grid fins which are mounted on the top of the rocket, and they sort of act like ailerons or elevators on a plane, and sort of direct the rocket down to the ground before a last minute rocket burn just before landing. Now this new Big Falcon ship is designed to descend belly first rather than rocket nozzles first. And the purpose of this is to try and bleed off as much velocity as possible using the aerodynamic drag, considering there is an atmosphere where it's landing. This will mean that when it comes in to do the rotation to do the last landing burn, it's traveling a lot slower than if it were to just travel backwards through the atmosphere. Now what's interesting about this is the BFS has very large fins on the rear of the rocket and also on the nose. But these don't work like regular fins on a rocket where they would maneuver the air similar to an aileron or elevator on a plane. Instead what they do is they rotate about the parallel axis of the rocket and actually are used to induce drag on the nose or the tail as it's descending that belly first. Elon Musk described it as similar to the way a skydiver would fall where they manipulate the drag. Now this concept is really interesting to me because it's almost identical to how my radio controlled wingsuit guy would fly. He would maneuver the angle of his arms to produce more or less drag at the front and would therefore cause him to pitch up and pitch down. But we all know how that went. Three, two, one. Yeah, the head snapped off. Anyway, so what I want to do is try to replicate this method of descent by building a radio controlled model of the Big Falcon ship. So let's jump into Fusion 360 and I'll run you through my current design. So here is my design of the model BFS. It's going to be built out of mostly foam board just to keep it as lightweight as possible uh, with obviously some 3D printed parts. The main power source is going to be a motor and propeller which is mounted at the bottom here and the thrust from the propeller is going to be vectored using these three fins. Now that's mainly just to get the rocket to altitude and also hopefully be able to perform uh, a slow landing. The main thing I'm interested in here is the adjustment of these two fins here. Now the real Falcon ship, the big Falcon ship, will adjust the angle of these fins up here but because this rocket is going or this model is going to be fairly small uh, to add the weight and complexity to adjust the top fins uh, I'm not sure that's necessarily relevant right now. Uh, the main thing is to test whether these bottom fins will adjust the center of pressure of the rocket uh, and because the center of gravity or mass will always be the same, when the centre of pressure moves either side of the centre of mass, uh, the rocket should pitch up and down. So that's what I want to test. And also, uh, you may be wondering why there's these odd sticks sticking out the side of the rocket. And that's mainly, uh, they're basically the landing legs. On the real rocket, they'll be using these fins as the landing legs. Uh, however, to keep this as lightweight as possible, um, to make that hinge as strong as possible and also have the servo withstand any kind of forces from a hard landing uh, just isn't feasible. So I thought I'd make my own sort of landing legs uh, which stick out the side and will be a lot stronger. Now this model is quite complex uh, with the whole thrust vectoring unit and therefore uh, on the heavy side so I'm not sure how fast it's going to descend. It might fall quite quickly and hit the ground quite fast. Um, and I did originally actually have an idea just to build a glider version which would just vary the fins at the bottom uh, and only be powered by a very small lightweight battery and not have a motor on board. Uh, this would have been dropped from a drone and hopefully just be able to uh, perform a controlled glide down. However, I thought I'd get some opinions from you guys on Patreon and it seemed like the majority of you wanted me to make this fully thrust vectored uh, version. So yeah, I think we should go ahead with this. So what I'm going to do is start the printer and get on with cutting out some foam. Because of the curved shape of the nose cone, it's quite difficult to construct from a sheet of foam. So I decided to 3D print it using a single outer wall layer method. Whilst the printer was going in circles, I started cutting out the bottom profile sections of the rocket from the foam sheet. Once they were cut out, I mounted the motor to the 3D printed motor mount, which also acts as a structural jig to hold the three fins together. The next step was to construct the main fuselage tube, which isn't easy using this foam board, as it tends to snap if you bend it too far. 
So I laminated one side using packing tape to add some tensional strength to what will be the outer side of the tube. Then after bending, rubbing, scoring or whatever you'd call it, the foam board started to curve and I could join the two ends together. However, the curve was pretty terrible and I'll most likely add some disc bulkheads inside to maintain the round shape. The nose cone eventually finished printing and I taped the main parts together to give an idea of what it'll be like when it's finished. Unfortunately, I was unable to finish it in this video, so prepare yourself for some lame excuses. Take it away, Tom. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut the part one of this build video slightly short uh, due to a number of reasons. The main issue being uh, the electronics that I ordered for this project, which include the electronic servos, uh, and also I ordered some lightweight batteries uh, for powering it. Uh, for some reason when I ordered them they weren't shipped for two to three days so they haven't arrived yet and I don't really want to be gluing stuff together uh, without having the electronics available uh, to obviously mount. The other issue I ran into was that the nose cone is printed uh, with a single outer wall layer to make it as lightweight as possible. However, for some reason my printer decided to uh, miss a few layers, it under extruded a few layers, um, so that was a, well it was about an eight hour print just wasted. So that's the end of part one of this radio controlled model Big Falcon chip. Uh, I hope you're interested in this project and if you are then it would be appreciated if you could leave a thumbs up. Uh, if you're new to my channel and you want to follow this project then please click subscribe down below and a huge huge thanks to all of my patrons for supporting me. You guys make these weekly videos possible and also thanks for suggesting or at least voting on the way I should configure this because I really think that the thrust vector design will be the most impressive if it works. I suppose we'll have to find out. Thanks very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you with part two next week. Goodbye.